In a fine example of British legal understatement, the coroner said he was mindful that there was some speculation in some quarters that this might not have been a simple car accident. I remember vividly we were having a seminar and I got a text from my office at Scotland Yard which said that um, you've been asked to do the inquiry uh, into the death of Princess Diana. I knew from the very beginning of this inquiry that it was going to be exceptionally difficult. The allegation is that the most popular woman in the world has been murdered by the Queen's husband together with MI6. That's very serious stuff. I remember the newspaper headlines. I also remember what was coming over on the television and the radio. And it was obvious that 85% of the population believed there was a conspiracy. Even relatives of mine said there's something behind this and someone's murdered her. That was part of the decision for me to do it, actually, because at the end of the day, uh, we had to get to the bottom of what went on here. So, after six years, this inquest has finally opened, with the eyes of the world upon it. The only question, will it tell us anything we don't already know about the death of the world's most famous woman? What we're investigating was conspiracy to murder. It's not going to be a quick and easy inquiry. You know, people immediately said, Lord Stevens is part of the establishment. He's going to find that there's nothing in there. But in actual fact, there were some things in the conspiracy allegations that needed to be sorted out. The Mirror chose today to publish the full text of a letter Diana gave Paul Burrell. In his book, the name of the man she suspected of conspiring to kill her was blacked out. Today it was revealed she'd written, My Husband. Paul Burrell's aware this will go down in history. It's the, it's the very precise nature of what she said. A, quote, accident in my car. What that headline is saying and that note is that Princess of Wales, in 1995, feared there might be a, a plan to get rid of her in an accident. You can't dismiss that, because two years later, she died in a car accident. The police wanted to see the note, which is a private note, but I thought it was of national importance, and they should see it, to know how vulnerable she was, how frightened she was, and how marginalised she was. I am sitting here at my desk today in October, longing for someone to hug me and encourage me to keep strong. The princess wrote all her letters at her writing desk, a knee-hole desk. I can see it now. My husband is planning uh, an accident in my car, brake failure and serious head injury in order to make the path clear for him to marry Tiggy. Camilla is nothing but a decoy. Uh, which, this did surprise me. Tiggy was Tiggy Legberg, who was the nanny for the two princes. That's what Diana believed at the time. She'd been told by somebody that Tiggy Legberg was having an affair with the Prince of Wales. <laughs> You also believe, Mohammed, strongly that Diana was pregnant at the time that she died, don't you? This was 100%. How, how can you be sure of that? Because she told me herself, and Dodi told me, I know this personally. We had really no evidence to support what he was alleging, but he claimed that this was a picture of her pregnant. So we had to see whether there was any truth in that. It was about motive, because it could have been, as was being suggested by Mr Al-Fayed, that the royal family didn't necessarily want a Muslim baby within their family. This photograph was taken on the 14th of July. The Express itself 
says this was published on the 15th, the photograph was on the day before, the 14th. Dodi didn't arrive in Saint-Tropez at the family villa until the 14th of July, late. So this photograph, clearly taken during daytime, was taken even before that relationship started. If this had been at the 14th of August, and you said, well, she'd been with Dodie for a month now, then fine. But I'm no gynaecologist. I know that before you met someone, you can't be showing signs of pregnancy. Inside the Ritz, Diana and Dodie had dinner in the Imperial Suite. And then they call me, say, what's happening? And then we're having dinner. We're coming back on Sunday and on Monday. They you know, they declare their engagements. Did Dodie tell you that? Did Diana Dodie tell you that? Dodie told me that, and Diana told me that on Saturday evening at 10 o'clock. The only evidence, and I'll call it that, was Mohammed al Fayed saying that he had a conversation with Diana in which she said she was engaged to Dodie al Fayed and she was pregnant. How can we prove that? How do we check that that's actually correct? In 2004, I took a phone call from someone at Scotland Yard. He said, well, we know that you spoke to the princess um, in the hours before her death. We want to talk to you about that conversation. I felt an obligation to help. She and I were friends. She called me from Paris. We'd had a conversation. She was coming home, and she was looking forward to coming home. She was desperately missing William and Harry. The police wanted to know if the princess had said to me whether she had become engaged, and I said, absolutely not. She had said, as she pretty much said to all the friends, and she always had a particular way of saying this, I mean, I need a new, another marriage like, like a rash on my face. But. I, it, it, it was very hard to dispute what Mohammed said. I wrote the last story while she was still alive at the News of the World. So I get sent down to try and buy up some of the crew on the boat. So I've got a bag with 10,000 quid in it and we actually get the first mate. And so he was quite a good coup, you know, because he watched them, he spoke to them. So it's like, great, well, you know, so how did they rock the love boat? Did they make love so passionately? Did it move in the water? So that's the kind of line I'm going for. Did they run across the stateroom with no clothes on? Did they go skinny dipping at 3 a.m., all that stuff? And he said, no, nothing happened at all. He called her mom. Uh, they sat at other ends of the table. She had her bedroom. When the kids were there, not even a peck on the cheek. Then when the kids left, um, it was the same. But I wasn't allowed to print that because that wasn't what anyone wanted to read back in the day. There was an expression in newspapers about uh, making it work. Yeah, just make it work. It's almost like make it happen. It's not make it up. It's not quite the same as make it up. But here's a story. Let's just make it work. Make it sound believable. Make it sound possible. Discovery.